Hey there, everybody in the FFBE Global Facebook group. Uh, welcome to this week's episode of Ask an Old Mog Video. Actually, welcome to everybody who sees this video on YouTube as well. Uh, you guys are definitely just as important as the Facebook group. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to have everybody here. I've been seeing a lot of questions in the group um, this week for whatever reason. I'm not 100% sure why this is coming up this week. I've been seeing a lot of questions about, um, about Golbez. And so I wanted to take a little bit to like talk a little bit about why Golbez is good and how Golbez can be good because I've seen some questions like how can I do as much damage as like so and so and so and so and so and so uh, content creator I can't do as much damage as them so why is my Golbez not as good um, and so I thought I might take some time to like break down like why Golbez is good I, I don't I'm, I'm uh, I don't know how useful this is be for everybody but I mean, I've, I've definitely seen a lot of questions about it um, and then I also got another question about a very old feature of the game um, that a player who just wasn't around when this feature was current and relevant um, was here, so didn't know a whole lot about it and just wanted to talk about it. So let's get into the questions. So our first question uh, is, you know, how do you use Golbez as Meteor? Um, so let me go ahead and break this down for you. Um, Golbez has a spell that you can upgrade to plus two uh, called Meteor and it scales off of his magic stat and also receives bonus damage based on how much MP he has. Um, other units who have Meteor plus two, such as Awakened Onion Knight, work the same way. Um, and this is a little different from the original Meteor spell. Um, so if you have copies of the original, um, I believe it's Golbez actually, if you have copies of the original Golbez, um, the three star unit, or I think maybe he's even a four star, I don't know, the original Golbez unit, um, he has a TMR, that is Meteor, and you can equip it, and in fact, I'm gonna show you, I've got it equipped on my Golbez, um, and it works the same way, um, but it's only one hit compared to three. So here's our team. I'm gonna go ahead and show you Golbez here. Here's my Golbez, um, and if you look at his equipment, he has this Meteor spell, right? This is Meteor. It's the Trustmaster reward from Golbez, the original Golbez, and it is one hit, magic-based, um, MP times 30, 100% damage, uses up all your MP, right? And so it's magic based. Okay, cool. Now compare that to his other ability, magic, or uh, here's his upgraded meteor, right? It is magic based physical damage, consumes all of his MP times 100 to deal 100% damage. So, and it's also three hits. So it's a little bit different, um, but that's that's what that is. So there you go, there's, there's meteor. Now some more details about it. It is a physical type magic spell, which means you can imbue it with any element you want and it benefits from physical killers when you gear him. Um, you can also boost it by um, using abilities or vision cards that allow him to store magic. So Dark Reign's TMR Magic Boost Plus or the ability on the newest vision card, a Knight of Gift Giving, will allow him to store his magic and raise his magic um, in order to do more damage. Um, Something just fell off my desk. Um, so uh, he will benefit from that. And uh, that's a good thing. You want to do more damage? Uh, you can use those abilities to do so. Oh my gosh. Stay. Stay. <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me about that. Um, so storing is good. Um, that allows you to do more damage. Um, as with any other ability or spell though, to get the most damage out of it possible, you want to make sure that you're applying buffs, breaks, and perils for weapons and elements and imbue him with the right element um, amplify his abilities use field effects use killer buffs use his own modifier boost because modifiers matter and use storing um, however you can get that now you also want to gear him for maximum mp and magic based on your available gear but thankfully golbez compared to awakened onion knight does this very easily and still has room for killers i'm going to show you a quick um build that um that i am borrowing from flip method and that gear uh, this build allows you to have you know pretty high magic 6560 um and 5000 mp um 5021 mp in my in my case um you got the empress's celestite rod um that allows you can get this from the chamber of the vengeful and then just a bunch of random tmrs and maybe even some stmrs from units this is a, a heliarch trustmaster reward the magic circlet Helio Light is the um, Soul Super Trust Master reward. For example, Trial rewards his own STMR, 
um, indestructible light you get from save your souls lightning who everybody gets for free now um, icy passion is from sweet nicole so it's an available five star base unit um, i put mp plus 30 percent on him from tella which is kind of funny because tella and golbez yeah um, and then this is meteor which we don't really need i'm gonna take this off okay that's just to show you the difference between the two different forms and then his own the vision card we got on him is Olivera's practice session vision card so this is kind of like a budgety you know basic golbez um and notice that because i mean you could take the mp 30 percent off I le i'm leaving it on um but um this allows you to have room for killers now depending on what other gear you might have you might be able to do something better like with clash of wills gear um the dazzling demoness vision card to get better mp um and stuff like that but this is kind of a budgety easy way to kind of get your golbez started is gear like this a nice two-handed weapon good MP vision card, which you can get from the um, the ticket exchange shops um, and things like that. And then just some TMRs, STMRs, and trial rewards from old units, and we're on our way. So I'm gonna show you how this works, how, how Meteor works, you can build a chain, um, and then show you how you can do even more damage with it by applying some, uh, some things for Golbez, okay? So let's go into the Vortex here, and we will go to the exchange button, which takes us to the castle in the vortex and we're gonna go to the training dummy if it loads there we go <laughs> tower of wind and we'll just swipe up and go on in there would you like to start yes we do and we'll see the difference between using Golbez um, with chaining and without chaining all right so Golbez um, just just by being in the party um, automatically like imperils the boss to all these things and does a bunch of breaks and stuff like that. You can't break this boss's stats, um, this enemy's stats, but you can apply imperils, which is important. So he does he does all these imperils and he breaks the boss technically, but he didn't really do it this time. So here's our damage from Golbez. We're just gonna hit Meteor. This is his Awaken plus two Meteor. It's gonna use up all of his MP and just hit the enemy three times. Notice it has a long animation with rocks falling from the sky. There we go. We're going to go ahead and guard. Okay. It says he did the, the capped out damage. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to restart the fight. So he can have his MP. And we're going to now apply, apply, apply some buffs and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to use Bulwark to apply, um, he's going to apply Wind to Golbez and reduce Wind Element for, um, or redu he reduce Wind Resistance, oh my gosh, sorry, and then buff some stats. There we go. So Kiko's also going to imperil the boss's Rod Resistance. That way, Golbez can do more damage with his rod that he's wearing. And Ling is going to... Um, she's going to do a human killer buff. Because even though this boss is a wooden statue, she's it's technically a human. There we go. And then just buffing the boss, or buffing Golbez as well. Alrighty. And notice Golbez now has 8,198 magic, so a lot higher. Um, and uh, we're ready to go. So... He's going to use his meteor. He's also imbued now with, um, he has wind element here, right? And a wind amp, which is cool. Um, and a human killer buff. He's got boosted stats. So we're in pretty good shape. And the boss is also, um, has resistances down for all these things. Takes more damage from rods. Okay. So there you go. Biggs and Wedge are just going to be chaining for us. So they are wearing um, your typical Biggs and Wedge. Uh, four times attack build so they've got two weapons um, and then they've got the the double attack material which lets them attack four times this is going to help them do an elemental chain because it's two elements then they have a third element imbued on them so it's gonna be a very you know it's gonna the chain's gonna build very quickly um, the timing for this is when you start to see the rocks first start to fall that's when you want to send your chainer um, so that the chain can kind of build up and Golbez can land all those rocks so we did, we did hit the damage cap last time, but let's see how we did.
Okay, so because he hit three times instead of just, you know, the uh, he hit three times, he broke the damage cap, and that time he did 30 billion damage compared to 9,999,999,999. So he did a lot more damage um, just by applying all that extra stuff. Pretty cool, right? Um, and uh, Biggs and Wedge did contribute a little bit to that, but it was not at all, you know, where the damage was coming from. It was all coming from Golbez. So how do you get more damage? Um, you can go even further by applying field effects. You can go even further by using Magic Boost for two turns to store him up. You can also use his ability on turn one, um, give your power to Meteor, which gives a very tiny three, uh, three times modifier to uh, Meteor, which is very, very small. You can also use his good Jet Black Curse from his um, STMR, which after three turns becomes a 88% defense and spirit break and a 150% dark imperil. So dark imperil, if you can give him dark damage, it's really, really good. Um, there you go. Lots of lots of ways you can add more damage to Golbez, okay? Um, but that's kind of the gist of it. So you want to just you know gear up as much as you can, MP and magic, um, give him killers, um, and then use all your in-game abilities to boost him up and do more damage. That's the basic gist of it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop that, drop out of the party here because we've, we've kind of addressed that question as far as I want to go. But if you've got more questions or if you want to see some additional builds on Golbez, you know, um, I have done other videos that kind of showcase some different builds with him. Um, and I'll try and put a, uh, a card up for that over there in just a minute. Um, so there you go. That was our first question. Um, our second question um, was, what exactly is the Chamber of Arms? So... Um, this was a fun one for me to think about because I remember the Chamber of Arms being a whole lot of fun um, because back in the day when it first came out, it like we were fighting some of these bosses with four star base units, three star base units, you know, starting to get our first five star base units. And then by the time it was done, we were we were just starting to get like seven star meta, you know, and, and things like that. And so like it was it's, it was a really fun time in the game where there's a lot to do. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. So to, I'm, I'm going to show you how to get there and then talk a little bit about what it is. If you go back to King Mog, you can get there however you want, either from the, the exchange button or whatever, but go to King Mog and then swipe down and then go down these stairs. And then here we go. There's a little teleporter underneath King Mog. And now we're in the Chamber of Arms. And if you walk around the room, you see all these different pedestals with all these different weapons um, and things like that. And so at its core, uh, it's a room in the vortex with 12 bosses that you can fight to collect weapons, armor, and more. And what's neat about these is you can take a team of 10 units and you can swap them out to be really flexible with your rotations and stuff like that. So I'll just go into one and show you. Battle Brachium, uh, sure. All right, it tells you what the challenge rewards are. Notice there's this in ability you can get here, and a lot of these challenges have an item that you get, like the Royal Crown, and then um, an ability, like this one is Ruling Fiend. Um, and then notice I've got a team of 10 units, potentially, that I could take into um, into fighting Brachium. Um, and what this, how this works is, at any point in the fight, you can, um, you can swap units to say, I want to bring Cloud for some reason, and so I can swap Elena for Cloud, or I could swap Terra for Melia, which would be a bad choice. Um, and it allows you to kind of like be really flexible with how you pop your team in and out. Um, so here's the reality of this. Um, most of the items that you can get from the Chamber of Arms are not that great at this point, but some have really good starter gear. Um, so if you're like brand new to the game and you have some Neo Visions unit, you can go in here and just wipe these trials out and get a lot of stuff. But even better than the gear is some of the abilities and stuff that you can grab. And so here are some of the good ones. Um, if you go and you beat the Alferg, that you can get an ability called Shadow Warrior, which gives you a weak, a weak Guts effect. Guts makes it so that if you take, you know, fatal damage, you will not actually die. You'll just be left with like one HP, which is kind of cool. Um, there's an ability called Brave Soul from the enemy Dabi, um, and you get that gives you a very low human killer effect on top of some other stuff. Um, there's an ability from Nunki, um, it's called Dragon of Affection with magic 40% on it and then some resistances to a couple of statuses. From Vindemiatrix, you can get an ability called Necropolis, it has multiple killers on it at 30%, which is nice. 
Um, you know, obviously we want better killers at this point, but having multiple of them on one ability is kind of cool. The best one is probably Maneater Plus from the Elnath trial. It's a 75% human killer. Um, very, very good. Um, and then the Equip Helm, which used to be um, limited to this one item in the game, Equip Helm from Tegmine, that allows you to wear helmets. Now we have some other options from Clash of Wills. Um, but for a while, this was like the only way to get this. This and, and Man Maneater Plus were the, the two rarest things in here. Um, and so you could go ahead and get those here. Um, so there you go. Definitely want to look at the uh, the wiki page and try and just kind of go through and see which of these you want. But definitely go ahead and get them all. They're, they're not that hard to get at this point. And just a couple of tips for you. Um, at this point, Neovision's damage dealers should be able to completely destroy every boss in two turns. And I put a little asterisk there because... Um, there is one that will take more than two turns because it has like multiple levels of HP locks depending on its um, its rules. And you'll learn more about that as you go. I don't want to spoil it too much. But most of them have an HP lock at 50%. So you like, you'll do like half their damage and then you'll do the other half the next turn. Um, most bosses have mitigation against physical or magical attacks. So I would recommend bringing evokers like Neovision's Terra. You can see at the top of my screen. Um, she can clear every fight using her shift forms chaining abilities because they are non-elemental evocation damage. Um, and she can just kind of like, if you gear her well, she can just kind of blow through every one. Um, so we'll just show you what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not going to do Vendemir. Um, I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to Sheraton because I think Sheraton is really cool. Sheraton was this one. Will I fight Sheridan? Yes, I will. These enemies, th these battles had like really cool sprites and really cool like designs and like they're all themed around like constellations. Really, really cool. So like here's Sheridan, okay? And Sheridan has, you know, she's right here. And uh, you know, we've got our team. So like I have not taken any actions yet. So I can click on swap, and if I want to bring, like, Bradley, I'm going to put Bradley and Ling. Okay. Uh, and maybe I want to have Roy Mustang, you know. We'll, we'll put Roy Mustang in here for, for Elena, and uh, we'll leave it at that. So I confirm. And there, I, have, I now have new members on my team. Now, I have not taken any actions yet, so I can do that as many times as I want. If I decide, oops, actually, I did want to have Elena here instead of, you know, Roy Mustang. And uh, we definitely need... We need Ling here, so I can I can go ahead and bring them back because I have not taken any actions yet. But as soon as I take an action, like Chow, I'm going to use Festive Fortune. The button is grayed out, and my team is locked for this turn, so there's nothing I can do. Um, I can I can still fight the boss, obviously, and I'm going to fight the boss. Um, I'm going to go ahead and break the boss, you know, with Ling. We'll we'll you know disarm. There we go. And uh, Terra, I'm going to shift and use her. Her abilities here to try and do some damage. Um, Chaos Wave. Here we go. See, one hit brought her down to the threshold, and she's stuck there. Um, so Elena and Starlight Elena can just go ahead and guard. She's gonna like transform now. And then like sh now there's like some little little fruits. And, uh, and Chow's going to tank some damage there because Chow's like that. And Chow counterattacked and killed the boss. So, like, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of these fights are not that difficult at this point in the game. Um, the hardest part will honestly be killing them with Espers and Limit Bursts and things like that if you bring a, t a unit that, that can counter like Chow does. Um, but a lot of them do exactly that. They, like, shift at 50%. They counterattack you. And then you just move on with the fight. And Terra can just, like blow through them most of them um you know with her evocation skill and there you go so if you've never done these you know it's a fun little jaunt into the history of the game and you can like learn more about older parts of the game uh, when we had to work really hard to fight these which was a, a really fun time um but there you go that's that's chamber of arms so if you've got a question you want to see in next week's video you know definitely let me know in the comments here on youtube or in the facebook group um, about something that you're interested in and maybe want to learn more about um, and we can talk a little bit about how to do that in a visual way um, for now though I think I'm done as long as things are done falling off my desk 
Um, that'll be just fine. Thank you very much. You can just sit there. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of stop here. Um, but I really appreciate uh, everybody taking a minute to, to talk about Golbez. And if you've got a better build for Golbez, you know, tell me what that is. I'd be happy to hear about it. Um, I, kn I know how to build Golbez really well myself because um, I've used him for a lot of stuff. Mine's level 130. Obviously, I use him for a lot of things. Um, and I have really good gear for him. But maybe you have something better than the budget gear that I showed. Like, you know, what, what do you, what do you, how do you like to build your Golbez? What do you like to use Golbez for? Do you prefer to use Awakened Onion Knight instead? Some people do, um, just because Golbez can be a little obvious choice sometimes. Um, you know, I do like him, but Onion, Onion Knight has style. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've got a question for next week, and I'll try and do that. Um, and we can have some fun learning about the game. But for now, that's it. And take care of each other. Be good to each other. Um, stay warm out there. It's really cold where I live. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm back in my sweatshirt. Um, and uh, yeah, take care. <laughs>